Hello and welcome. In this video, we will continue exploring how we might incorporate Gen.AI, Azure OpenAI, LLS, all these buzzwords into the world of business intelligence and in the world of Microsoft Fabric. The use case for today is a really interesting one. We will use semantic link library in Python to help us build out a data dictionary, a list of all of our data sets, tables, and measures. And then we're gonna use Azure OpenAI to take a DEX measure definition and to generate a business-friendly measure description. Now, I have gotten a lot of requests after the last video asking to help with how to set up the plumbing, how to set up and configure Azure OpenAI, how to make sure that it's available and running in Microsoft Fabric. And that video with a deep dive on how to do all of that is coming. And while I'm still trying to figure out the best way, the very best way to have it configured, I will continue doing these short teaser videos just to help spread the word, just to keep the excitement going and to paint the art of what's possible once this technology is prominent and readily available in Microsoft Fabric. Before I get into details, let me give you a high level flow of how everything is put together and then we're gonna take a look into the specifics. So what does it take to get the thing going? Number one, you have to have Microsoft Fabric. You have to install the semantic link library. You need to have Azure OpenAI configured and wired to be used in Fabric as well. And again, all of those topics will be covered in subsequent videos, so stay tuned. The next step is to create a couple of functions that we're gonna be using to help us enhance and enrich our data. The first step is you need to write a function that connects to Azure OpenAI, takes a question and responds with a, an answer. Then once that function is written, and that's the function where you do all the plumbing, you use the key, you connect to the, to the model and to the endpoint, do all of the wiring. So once that's written, you can then build other functions on top of it. So here I wrote a function that generates a measure description from the DAX. So the way that works is you feed the DEX that is used to create and define a measure. And this function uses prompt engineering and open AI to come back and generate business friendly description of the measure. The next thing is we need to have a couple of helper functions. And those functions are needed because our semantic link library generates tables that have characters that are not Spark or Delta Lake friendly. So what we do in these functions, we go and replace all of the characters that our data lake does not like in the table, different in columns, in tables, and replaces them with underscores. Once that is done, we're going to be using our semantic link and built-in feature of the semantic link. The way you do, you get that is by importing from sampy.fabric. And then once that's there, we can get the list of our data sets we can get the list of our tables, we can get a list of our measures. And then once we have those tables extracted, then we use our helper functions to enrich the corresponding tables with additional columns to make them more business folks friendly so they can take a look at our data dictionary and decide whether the logic that we're using makes sense to them and whether they have any feedback on how we developed our measures. Some of this Python code will be posted on our blogs so please look for the link in the description of the video. Okay, now we can go through the, the code and kind of see how, how this thing works. So step one is we're just gonna get a list of all of the data sets from our fabric environment. So by default, data sets, list data sets functions take a bunch of parameters. If the parameters are not provided, it's basically gonna generate a list of data sets deployed in the current workspace, which is fine for me. The next thing is we're gonna clean that table that the semantic link provides and we're gonna rename all of the columns to make sure that they meet the naming requirements. That creates the Spark data frame. And then we use this line here to basically save off our data sets into the data lake and we're gonna give it a name of PBI data set. The next step is to generate all of the tables that live inside of those data sets. The way that will work is we're gonna iterate through all of our data sets. And then for each row in the data sets data frame, 
we're now going to find all of the measures that live in the data set. We're also, so that's going to return a table of all of the measures. Then we're going to rename all of the measures to meet our naming, naming requirements. And we'll do the same thing. We're also going to add another column called data set names. So by default, when we create, when that code runs and creates the list of measures, it's just going to list all of the measures and they're not going to be broken down by the data set. So what we want to do is want to make sure that each measure is scoped to a specific data set in case we have measures with the same name so we can keep one from the other. So now this is one crazy line. What's happening here is we, we need to create another column that is a concatenation of the measure name and a measure description. In fact, why don't I run a quick line of Python code so you guys could see what the measure tables looks like. So to demonstrate, here I'm running this command. So I'm connecting to the semantic link library and I say, hey, list all of the measures that exist in a data set called COPA and PVM, which by the way, the name of this data sets tells you that there will be soon a video about how to work with SAP data sets. And we're gonna be doing a lot more with price volume mix. And we can now examine what that table looks like. So we see that we have table name, measure name, measure expression. Actually, it also will pull in the measure description. But in our case, most of those measures are, measure descriptions are actually empty, as you can see. And this is the column that we would like to populate so that our business folks can take a look and say, hey, yep, what you're doing makes sense. This is the right logic. So that's what this command, what this line of code, Python code generates. And we're gonna do this in a loop and we're gonna create a list of these measures and we're gonna basically save it off into the table called PBI measure. Then what we do is we take our measure definition, which is our measure name, concatenated with measure the definition DAX, and then we send that off into our gen AI function. And then when that runs, it's gonna generate the full table for us. Let's examine what the table looks like. So now that I've saved the data frame back into our lake house, and I created the PBI measure table, I could just run a regular Spark SQL against it and take a look at the content of the table. So here I see the first bunch of columns come from the semantic link library. You could see that measure description here is not populated because I did not populate it in my desktop. And these are extra columns that I've attached. So here I have a data set name. I have the measure definition, which is measure name plus the DEX. And now I also have the measure description, which is what our Gen AI capability generated. So for example, here we're looking at revenue. So I could click here and I look at the definition. It says this measure calculates the total revenue by summing up the revenue values from the COPA table. The next one is cases. So this says measure calculates total number of cases. Let's take a look at revenue year over year. So this calculates year over year change in revenue. It subtracts the revenue from the current year from the revenue from the previous year. And that tells us how the revenue changed. That's correct. We also have a bunch of other measures. So basically you could see how we have used Gen AI and Azure Open AI to take our now DEX and Power BI measure definition and turn it into a business audience friendly description that makes it easy for them to understand what these measures do, what the logic is, and help us validate whether we built them correctly. So at the end of the day, we end up with three tables. The first one is PBI data set that lists all of the data sets that we have deployed in our workspace. The second table is PBI measure. That is a table that lists all of the measures that we have in our data set. We have also enriched the measures table with a business friendly measure definition that explains to a business audience what the measure is and how it works. In addition to the data set and the measures table, we have also created a columns table and that table has all of the tables and all of the columns, column descriptions. So with that, we have the essential tables to build our data catalog, our data dictionary, and to, to help us document 
what we have available for the business folks for analysis. Now what I've done is I've run the Spark SQL command to take a look at the contents of the PBI column table. And here you have table name, column name, you have the data types, you have the descriptions, which will be populated if that's done in the data set. And so you have a lot of different information about the columns. And at the end, you should also see a data set name. So we know exactly which tables belong in which data set. So that's it for this video. Again, this is high level, a little bit short. There will be a deep dive plumbing con connection configuration videos coming hopefully very soon. Meanwhile, if you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you for stopping by and I hope to see you back soon.